beloved people of God. It is good to worship with you. I'm Holly Morrison, pastor of Phippsburg Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. It is the fourth Sunday of the Easter season, sometimes called Good Shepherd Sunday. Whether you're riding herd, feeling sheepish, or even running with the wolves, you are welcome here. Now, take a deep breath. Just that right there may be enough of a task. Breathe and know that whether you sigh softly or fight for each breath, you are not alone. We are God's people and we conspire, literally we breathe together in our Sabbath rest, in our singing and in our prayers. Let us conspire then, conspire for peace, conspire for hope, conspire for love, as the music welcomes us into a time of worship. Please join in our call to worship. We walk by faith through war zones and green pastures. We walk by faith on the paved path and the cliff's edge. We walk by faith, weeping, raging, in silence or singing. We walk by faith with Jesus, step by step. Together, we find our way.
join in a responsive reading of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hi, kids. I'm over at Marsha and Roger Clark's farm because I wanted to give you a chance to see some real sheep. There's new lambs. Hi, little one. And some, some proud mamas. And you know, all these sheep are really sweet animals, but there's one thing that they can't live without. And that's a shepherd. Marcia and her family come in and they help the sheep with so many things. They make sure that the sheep have medicine when they're sick. They make sure the sheep have shelter when there's rain or snow. They make sure that the sheep have clean water to drink. And if the, la if the sheep have trouble when they're giving birth, they help so that the lambs can be born safely. I'm really glad these sheep have a good shepherd. Did you know that Jesus, one of the ways he talks about himself is he says, I'm like a good shepherd too. He watches out for us and takes care of us and loves us all. I'm glad that these sheep have a good shepherd. I'm glad we all have a good shepherd. Let's pray together. God, thank you for lambs and ewes and rams, and all the sheep. Thank you for all the people. Thank you for noisy people and quiet people. Thank you for noisy sheep and quiet sheep. And thank you for all the shepherds who take good care of them and who take good care of us. Amen.
Now I invite you to join in the prayers of our community. We pray that God's healing power continue to be revealed for Kathy, Sue, Anne, Ames, Sylvia, and all who seek healing of mind, body, or spirit. We pray in solidarity with all who grieve, including the families and co-workers of Maine workers lost in this last year, and those who mourn lives lost to the twin pandemics of COVID and racism. Christ, have mercy on our nation and our world. Surrounded by so much death, give us the courage and strength to claim and live into your resurrection power. We lift up the power of God's love in the lives of those with anniversaries this week, including Bob and Brenda Kohler, Bob and Fran Scott, and Fred and Mayor Hartman. May love continue to shine in your lives. And we celebrate the lives that continue to shine in our midst, including Phyllis Bailey, Bob Kohler, and Bonnie Hart, who all have birthdays this week. May the year ahead be filled for each of you with blessings. And now in the silence, we come with all that we are and all that we long for, offering these to the one who hears us even before we ask. Let us be in prayer. Dear God, we offer our prayers from a difficult landscape. We stand at a crossroads between green pastures and killing fields. And our hearts are weary even as we strive to listen for your voice and make our way toward a land of good things. Shepherding God, open your gate to us. Lead us into whatever comes next. We know, O oh God, that for now, especially for those of us who are not sick, not frontline workers, and are not dealing with other economic or housing difficulties, it is our task to understand this moment, what it might require of us, and what it might make possible. Prepare us, shepherding God, to think big thoughts around your table. Assure us that goodness and mercy are already here. Amen. Our Gospel reading comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 10 verses 11 through 18. The image of Jesus as Good Shepherd is familiar to most of us, but the origin of that image is less familiar. Jesus is invoking an older scripture from Ezekiel, 
that describes the difference between good and bad shepherds. In chapter 34, Ezekiel reveals this wisdom. As to bad shepherds, you have not strengthened the weak. You have not healed the sick. You have not bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strayed. You have not sought out the lost, but with force and harshness you have ruled them. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. If we reconnect the teaching of Jesus with its prophetic Hebrew roots, the image of the Good Shepherd is shaken loose from the old paintings of spotless white robes and passive beauty. It becomes instead a call to vigorous action. As the Reverend Seth Wispelway writes, the result of good shepherding is a restored experience of public justice. Now let us listen to today's reading, taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Please pray with me. Jesus, you have given these words to us as a gift from your life, and you have given us the power to lay them down and take them up. God, help us take up these words. Take them up as a comfort and a challenge. Take them up and carry them so that your love may carry us into action. Amen. I'll trade you wood for sheep. It's a common refrain around our table, on nights when a good day's work or the need for distraction lead us to break out a board game. Our standard favorite game is Settlers of Catan, which involves the building of roads, boats, and cities, and the trading of cards to get victory points. All of that building requires resources from the board game landscape, wood from the forests, wheat from the fields, ore from the mountains, clay bricks from the foothills, and wool or sheep from the green pastures. We each start with a couple of small settlements and trade back and forth to get what we need. Anybody want brick? I'm looking for ore. I need wheat. I'll trade two ore for one wheat. I'll trade your wood for sheep. In Settlers of Catan, as in real life, it's 
kind of hard to deal with sheep. They don't always match up to your own projects and priorities. There are some things you really can't do without, and times you really can't do without them, but other times they just sort of accumulate and get in the way. Trade for some wool, some wood and brick, and you can make a road through the wilderness. Trade for enough wheat and ore, and you can build a city. But sheep? Well, sometimes you just end up with a bunch of sheep. There are no wolves in the wilds of Catan. That's what makes it a pleasant diversion, a game. But in our world, the world Jesus walked in, the world Jesus entered to claim in the name and love of God, there are wolves everywhere. There are wolves that sit in our hearts, ears back and teeth bared, remembering every wound they've endured and looking for something they can bite. And there are other wolves that threaten. There are wolves that deal death through sneak attack. Invisible toxins leached into water and soil and air, or rural aquifers drained and bottled, labeled with a few pine trees and the word pristine and sold off in cities far away. There are wolves that deal death more boldly, taking down a 13-year-old brother, a 16-year-old daughter, a beloved father gunned down in broad daylight by those called in to keep the peace. Sometimes it seems like the wolves are in charge of everything. I'm sure that's how the disciples felt when Jesus was arrested. I suspect it's how a lot of people felt watching the Derek Chauvin trial as black and brown people continued to be killed by police before and after the verdict. The verdict was a rare and powerful sign of accountability. But I heard many people say it was not justice, because justice in practice would involve people not being killed. Justice in practice would not include the Minnesota police closing ranks seven deep around a church where protesters were offered food and first aid just so that no one could come in or out. That's bad shepherding right there, and it needs to be called out. In our gospel passage today from the Gospel of John, these words leap out from the text. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. Jesus was reminding his followers how easy it is to stop caring. How common it is for you and I to wash our hands and turn away and enable a crucifixion. After all, violence feels so normal. Maybe what we need to live out this gospel is to borrow a little from settlers of Catan. Maybe it's time to trade wood for sheep. The heart of today's gospel is that Jesus is no casual laborer here. He doesn't go home at the end of the day. He doesn't flee the scene. Instead, he takes all our human violence, acknowledges the pain and suffering, and chooses to respond in a totally different way. 
He rejects the tactics of bad shepherds who are willing to substitute violence for justice. He rejects the systems that allow and even encourage public executions, lynchings, and, exec and crucifixions. Instead, Jesus puts his own wounded hands out to stop us from building more crosses. He trades wood for sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and they know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. Jesus doesn't just trade wood for sheep. He devotes his entire life to their care. And when people try to limit the flock, to say that only certain sheep are worthy of the shepherd's care, what then? Jesus laughs and says, I have other sheep you don't even know about. Do you remember how it felt? When you first realized you were included in the love and care of Jesus? Or maybe that awareness is just starting to dawn now. You, after all the bullying, you, after all the abuse, you, even though others told you you were not worthy, Jesus Christ says, oh, you beloved one, I've been looking for you. I've been trying to gather you back in to keep you safe from the wolves here in the shelter of the beloved community. Look, there are still waters and green pastures. Look, there's a table set and a place set saved for you. Grace and redemption and an unending welcome await. Perhaps this is our challenge as Easter people, as followers of our resurrected and redeeming Lord. We get to live every day watching for Jesus' other sheep. We can't presume anyone is outside his circle. In fact, just to be on the safe side, Maybe we should assume that the ones who look the least like us are the sheep we should care the most about. So friends, followers and seekers of Jesus, try it out. Reject the way of the cross. Embrace the way of the good shepherd and trade wood for sheep. Play along. I'm pretty sure this way everyone wins.
Now hear these words of benediction, which come to us from the Franciscan tradition. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain and rejection so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and embody solidarity with, until their pain is turned into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. Go in peace, my friends, to love and serve our risen Lord. Amen. Thank you.